Yeah, good afternoon, uh, Mike, and also Matt. Uh, good to be on again. Um, thanks for inviting me. Yeah, let's. Uh, one of the things that we're going to be talking about is uh, Robert uh, owns uh, InnoFlex, and uh, uh, I have a, something I need to read here about talks about what he does. Recently, InnoFlex Solutions has taken the audience on a journey of engaging with technology, specifically ledger, lever, leveraging, I can do it, automating in the food and beverage industry, specifically within this consumer packaged goods and non-food industries of consumer products. InnoFlex Solutions believes in reviewing industry trends that automation will accelerate within the next one to three years. This has led to such topics as why automation, transitioning to automation, transitioning and sustaining automation, and now how to be flexible and nimble using automation. A little tongue tied today. Today, <laughs> today, I want to cover three main points that Inflex Solutions has gained through recent success in working with two industries moving to automation. One is a plant-based products producer of multiple formats and a leading consumer products company in the print and e-commerce on-demand printing industry with just-in-time ordering and manufacturing. So I guess our first question is, talk about some of the key wins for most companies being nimble utilizing automation. Yeah, so Mike, you did a great job. Uh, thank you. Uh, and following doctor, the doctor there from uh, Lawrence Tech, I found his points very interesting. And I'll go right into my point. Uh, when we talk about professional development, robotics, he talked about innovation of materials, nursing, a whole gamut of our industry. So InnoFlex Solution is, is in that space. And so what we find with being nimble, utilizing automation is labor. Is a lot of it's about labor rebalancing, uh, labor reductions for internal cost reasons, uh, and also the customer and the consumers that we're going to talk about the customer right now. It's about quality and consistency of their product shift to shift. Um, and that leads even to logistics, getting it out in time and also optimizing the time that's available, uh, being uh, efficient and allowing these brands to innovate and renovate. And so sales can be happy launching new products on, sh on the store shelf or uh, in, in showrooms if it's, uh, you know, non-products, uh, not food products like furniture or things like that. So what we're seeing is there is this, this noise in the, in the marketplace of less, you know, with the pressure on labor, you know, how can we do it with uh, not so much less labor, but rebalancing labor. And, and in essence, you reduce labor and have this consistency, Mike. Matt? Okay. Well, what are some typical ways uh, that companies can be nimble and flexible in automation? Yeah. So you, I think one of the keys today, there's a shift. The paradigm used to be, uh, you know, uh, make it and install it on the floor, bolt it down, and it stays there for 10 years. And uh, we make this, and I'm, I mean, I'm talking again, Matt, in this case, the food industry, not the automotive industry, but they share the same technology as far as robotics. So the shift as, as of the last few years and what we're seeing right now is with modularity. So how can we have adaptable equipment that's flexible enough to be configured for today's footprint of what the market wants for these this cust the customers to what's gonna happen in the next 18 months. So how can you adapt and be and reconfigure quickly? Um, and when you're doing that, we're talking about uh, making sure you have control over some key metrics that I, I think are important for, cust for our customers. And that is product variability, uh, and material var variability. So these are things that are abnormal noises that happen in production. Also, skill level variability. I heard the doctors from L Lawrence Tech say about you know, training and always the professional development. What we're finding is that companies are struggling with uh, you know, uh, addressing their talent levels uh, and getting that once they get the talent in, how to sustain that, that talent level to, to meet their internal metrics. The other thing we're seeing, Matt, is, is process variance. So the overall process of producing a good or goods uh, there's a lot of variance in their system operations. So what we're finding out with uh, flexible systems is that modular systems, when we go that route, need to address those three main core areas. Those are key, key points, Matt. All right. Uh, so uh, I guess Agile is the key right now, right, in all industries. Yeah, Agile is the key because of several reasons. Uh, if we talk about non-food industries, so let's go and talk about the company that's uh, in the uh, e-commerce space. 
uh, doing, uh, you know, business cards and, and uh, you know, sort of like a, uh, you know, not necessarily Vistaprint, but companies like that. What, what happens is with agility is their, their processes change from, from, from hour to hour, meaning on what they run and how much of that they run. So in order to, uh, to do more and to get more out into the distribution channel in their warehouse and in logistics, they need to have control over these variables with agility. And so systems that when you talk about modularity, can you uh, roll it on the floor? Can you plug it in with power and all your utilities and have it self-contained, self-brained to do its job without having operator interface? Um, and that's kind of the idea. It's kind of the idea of being like a, in the industry, a co-producer, a co-manufacturer, which they would, they roll equipment in and out and configure it to meet their vast different customers, desires and products that they run. So it's that same mindset, but agility, Mike. Well, it sounds like we need to have you up to Lawrence Tech's um, Industry 4.0 lab at some point. Uh, we've got uh, a really interesting lab up there now with some KUKA robots and a, uh, McNaughton McKay installed a pilot um, automated assembly line for us, uh, controlled by Siemens automation materials. Um, it's eventually going to have, uh, well, it's very close to actually now having a virtual counterpart. So yes. you can, uh, so you can design the assembly line. You can design an assembly line on the virtual version to make sure it works before you put it in the real world. Talk, talk about that a little bit about yeah. the importance of uh, virtual uh, reality yeah. and simulation to these technologies. Very much so. So it's a low cost of entry. So they call it yeah. digital twin, right? So digital right. twin. So you you draw and design in virtual. Uh, the whole building, uh, the equipment, the people, the logistics, the flow of materials in and out of the line, uh, taking finished goods out of the line. What we've seen, uh, we've done a little bit of that. What we've seen is the cost for capital, your investment goes down exponentially. Uh, and, and that's one of my other talking points is that it allows you to, to uh, you know, do things like, you know, when you do these line simulations, you can find uh, bottlenecks in the line. You can find places where it won't be efficient and you design it out, right? It's just computer bits and time. Uh, and at the end of the day, you can translate that to your, your OEMs. Working with a good OEM and a good uh, engineering firm, you can reduce your CapEx investment and your return on investment uh, quicker. And, and also you can design, one of my other key points, Matt, is that you want to, uh, the depreciation of CapEx today, that, that equipment, you want to get it less than the, the old model of 10 years in the food and beverage industry. So that means the type of equipment you put in needs to be fit for the customer's purpose, not more than, it's not a big ship you're building with all these different things and modules on it that you don't really need. It can be a nice nimble boat that gets you from the shore and into the water and back on the other side of the shore. Uh, and that's really the mindset, Matt. That's a very good point. Yeah, very good point. What we're also seeing, Matt and Mike, is that, uh, you know, what's important is, you know, aligning solutions with the customer's short and long-term goals. A lot of uh, noise in the industry is offering the customer something that really is not part of their, their strategy, uh, meaning their strategy for their operating model. You know, how are they going to supply? What are their supply channels? So in, a, in the food and beverage industry, in the, in the consumer packaged goods industry, they've got several, you know, several different modes of getting formats to get the product out, several different distribution channels. So that means the equipment needs to be flexible and agile to meet those, those different formats. And what happens typically is a lot of that is outsourced to co-producers and co-manufacturers where you lose some of that control and some of that flexibility. And what some companies are trying to do is bring it internal and then have equipment, which they don't have today, that can meet these different formats. And so we're seeing a lot of that coming into play. And the real reason for that is they want to be first out in the market, and they want to be able to launch new brands out to the market and innovate quickly. So we're seeing that happen. Is it sort of the uh, Steve Blank fail quickly mantra here? If Try it. If it doesn't work, you're agile. You can fine tune it on the fly kind of thing. So in the R&D world, Mike, yes. Uh, I'm going to speak from the commercial world where, you know, it's about revenue in and, and you know, profitability and operational costs. 
So I think what Matt brought up, his point was, you know, doing this uh, virtual digital twin eliminates uh, fail fast because you're going to fail in the just pure bits and bytes of drawing it out and run simulations. So it, it accelerates, Mike, the, the, um, the potential success factors by doing that. Um, and uh, most companies want to leverage that. Uh, the challenge there too, it's not the technology that's the, the, the bottleneck, it's understanding the customer's internal goals and aspirations and how they operate. Because if you don't have the right tools in place for them, it's not gonna be sustainable. It won't, it'll just be the next big widget in their facility, but they can't sustain it. And in, and in essence, they don't meet the, the throughput goals that they want and, and the products don't get out to the customer and consumers as they need to. So I think uh, applying the right technology for the short long-term goals has to be understood. And then you 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 know you help the customer align the solutions with their aspirations. Matt? Sounds good. Okay, well we're getting close to the end of the segment. We have just a couple of minutes. Oh, left. it's fast. Jeez, <laughs> it goes quicker than you think. <laughs> um, we just I just want to make sure that people know how to get a hold of you and oh, uh, basically yeah. basically describe the services that you folks offer and yeah. uh, how be how people can avail themselves of those. Yeah, so really short, uh, we are an engineering, consulting, and project management firm. So we, uh, we do packaging systems for uh, food industry, non-food industry. Uh, we're located in Novi, Michigan. Uh, we, uh, we can reach us at uh, uh, InnoflexSolutions.com on the web, or you can reach me directly, uh, Robert.Champion at InnoflexSolutions.com. Uh, you can reach us at the office at 248 994 Two 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 three extension three one three four or my mobile two four eight two one four eight four eight zero and one thing I want to throw out here, Matt, we're we're going to expand on this topic. Uh, we're going to do a interactive webinar on June the eighth, uh, where okay. we're going to bring in a materials expert to talk about this whole ecosystem about manufacturing. Uh, it's about agility transitioning uh, when you talk about different packaging materials. How can you move from this style to that style quickly with the assets you have? And we've done that successfully with two big companies here recently. So 